Welcome back to 5 Minute Knives, the show where I come up with something clever to say in the beginning of each episode. Today, we're going to be talking about a Puko, the Benchmade Puko, and uh, spelled two U's, two K's, and this one's wearing a custom sheath made by me. In case you're wondering, this is the sheath it came with. We're going to talk about that in a second, and it, and it makes total sense to me why our subscriber, David Rim, good subscriber, friend of the show, would want a custom sheath for this guy. It's a great knife, and I'm not a fan of the sheath it comes with. So I agree with him in his decision to hire me at Dragon Scale Concealment to come up with a nice sheath for him. Uh, there was a challenge with the sheath, just because it, it, the Puko comes with rubberized grips, rubberized handle here. And that can be a challenge for a lot of Kydex uh, sheath makers out there. So we'll talk about that. But first, we're going to talk about the Puko. The Puko has a 3 point. 7.5 inch blade, beautiful grind, um, not a very thick blade, 0.14 inch thick blade, and uh, overall length of 8.25 inches, CPM 3V steel, you guys know that steel, I remember when it first came out as the new hot super steel, and um, although this is just a first impressions video, I can already see some of the, like, you can almost kind of tell the characteristics in grain. I can see uh, David's used this knife a fair amount. The tip is still holding true. It looks like a really solid bushcraft knife. You know, when you see knives in pictures or on the internet, it's hard because if the, a knife doesn't have the geometry that you exactly, that speaks to you, you, you kind of tune out, right? But when you get that same knife in hand later on down the road, you may be surprised. And this knife actually had both. It's always spoke to me. I like its big brother. I forget what it's called, but it's got a big brother I was thinking about picking up. Now I'm thinking about buying this. So thank you, David, for turning me on to the Puko because it's a great knife. Uh, only available for pre-order on Knife Center right now. About $130, bucks, um, give or take, with shipping. Great knife. Is it worth $130? Bucks? With this sheath, comes with a little ferro rod holder here. Uh, yeah, I mean, this leather's pretty stiff, and, you know, there's really not much keeping it in there, but it comes with a little dangler. It's not too bad. I don't think it's a terrible sheath. It just, yeah, I think this is one of those sheaths that looks great in pictures, and then you get it in hand and go, man, maybe I want a Kydex one. So I think that's why David hit me up, and I hope you're going to be proud, bud, because this sheath came out really good. This is a cool sheath. Not because I made it, but check it out. So this is a friction fit. And we'll talk about that. That doesn't have like much of a click. Set up for left hand with a combat loop. Combat loops are great. And you can adjust these things here for your belt size. I just put it all the way to the end, let the customer fix it. And there was that. Now with the rubberized handles, I'm going to give you guys a good example. Here's an example. This is the Cold Steel Recon Tonto, right? Here's another sheath for another customer. Red carbon fiber and black with a combat loop. And this just has a very loose um, friction fit. Just like that. Not much of a click there. Not like some of my other sheaths. But that's because this might need to come out in a hurry if you're, uh, you know, feeling cranky or a little bit nervous. Um, here's another sheath I made for the same knife, another customer. And this one's in a sage green and a battleship with orange finishing washers. Really pr pretty. And this one has a little bit more retention because that's what was requested. With David, he sort of sent me the Puko and kind of said, I want a sheath. We talked about what color. Uh, what he wanted for an attachment. He did ask me about the exact spacing with the um, eyelets here. I can tell you this, that it is drilled to fit a, a large tech lock, and I only really worry about these. These guys, of course, are not just aesthetic, but these are also for retention reasons. So sometimes I'll place a uh, eyelet where I need more retention. A uh, good case in point is these top two. They don't really fit with these other guys as far as, like, you can't put a tech lock up there because the handle starts. Uh, but we needed more retention right there. We placed these, and that just really summed it all up, cinched it all up, excuse me. And uh, what a great knife. This is a great little knife. So this is just first impressions. We're not going to go crazy. Little five-minute knurfles. But already, I kind of want the Puko for myself. I think this is a great little knife. This would be a great woods companion. And here's that friction fit. The other thing I want to tell you guys, see, you just kind of push it in there. It's not going to wobble. It's not going to come out. Nothing's going to happen. Nothing's going to happen. That little, if you heard anything, it's in the combat loop. And these are really nice. They're better than tech locks, in my opinion. Drilled the same, and you just got to push a button to open it. He can set this up for scout carry. 
whatever you want. So all four of these holes, so you can switch from scout carry to vertical bud. Uh, it's ambidextrous, so you can switch to the black side if you want to carry on the the right side of your hip. You're good to go. So great sheath. Uh, what I could say about some of these rubberized grips, though, is it does depend on if they're oiled or not. I did add a just touch of light oil to this blade because I want it coming back to them shiny and nice. And also I had to strike a balance with the retention. So if this knife is completely dry, it's going to have more retention. It's going to be a little more grippy, a little more sticky. If you just oiled it, it's going to be a little looser. And that's the thing with these rubberized handles. That being said, I like the grip. It's a, a fairly neutral grip. Swells in the hand. Uh, it says it's Santoprene as a handle material, whatever ever that means. They're saying this is an OD green. I get more of a OD mixed with like a tannish out of this, but you guys tell me my eyes suck. Um, and other than that, so here's the retention right now. It's just, just some very light oil, and that's it. You just, much like, almost in the spirit of the sheath it comes with, it should be able to just slide in and out. You don't really need to use your thumb, but the thumb will help you draw it, and it actually gives you a much better grip. You know, these sheaths, you only have a couple of fingers on the bottom when you draw, which is just fine for bushcraft. This is not an emergency knife. That being said, if he's holding something with one hand and needs to cut something with the other, I want him to be able to draw this knife with a comfortable grip, and that's what we have here. And I really like this friction, tension, retention here. It's There's a little drainage hole right there. And he just went with the no frills. This is just a solid sheath form, a great knife. If you had to ask me based on first impressions, would I buy the Benchmade Puko? I would tell you that it's a total buy, for sure. I really like this knife. It's a great size, too. Um, just really, really nice. So it's about 4.5 ounces, they say. Yeah, feels like that. It's super lightweight. Uh, the sheath probably weighs as much now with the combat loop. I haven't weighed them. But this whole package, that's a, that's a nice little package to be going hiking with. I think you're set with that. And you're not going to scare everybody with it. The Hunter Orange and Black came out great. I love that color combo. You guys know I'm a sucker for that. And uh, just thanks, David, for uh, sending this in for review. I do appreciate that. If you guys want to send a knife in for review, I will give you a discount on a custom sheath. So send me a fixed blade to uh, our P.O. box. should be in the description there. Um, you know, hit us up at dragonscaleconcealment.com to order your sheath first. Or you can hit me up on Instagram and send me a message. Or you can send me an email to dragonscalejoe at gmail and tell me what you're thinking about making. And we'll go back and forth a little bit. And then I'll, I'll shoot you a quote when we decide that's, you know, when we get it pegged down. So, you know, all in all, a fine knife. knife. And I think that's kind of the thing with these custom sheaths is if you have a really great knife that you're in love with and it comes with a sheath that's a little, eh, I'm not picking on Benchmade. It's not my thing. It's kind of hard leather. It's okay. But even just this style doesn't speak to me. I don't like not being able to get a decent grip on my uh, knife when I draw it. With this setup, I mean, you get just this nice full grip. You're good to go. If one hand's occupied, it, this can be a one-handed operation. Uh, and again, if the retention gets a little tight, you could always oil the knife and we're right back to possibly even too loose, just slightly. So you got to find that balance. And that's something I just learned how to do, and I really like it. So now I'm excited to make more knives with rubberized handles, but just let's not make a thing of it. More special occasion. But yeah, really cool knife, really cool sheath for a good subscriber of ours. And uh, once again, the Benchmade Puko is a total buy.